Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new M.I.A. album, Matangi. M.I.A. is a UK via Sri Lanka singer, rapper, producer, and songwriter who is on her fourth full-length commercial studio album right here. When M.I.A.'s music first gained popularity in underground music, her sound was fresh, exciting, and bright. She had this really eccentric vocal style and these very hard-hitting and colorfully produced beats that featured musical influences from all around the world. And after this full-length debut, M.I.A. took this very magnetic personality in her music and focused it into some bona fide hits on her next full-length record, Kala. And the singles on this record made her a household name in the world of pop music at the time, also made her a pretty controversial figure. She was collaborating and performing with big-name artists. Her name was on everyone's lips. It seems like she was really on the cusp of becoming a long-lasting figure in mainstream music. And she just threw it all away. Not in this really dramatic way or anything like that, even though there were some spats and fiascos that have occurred in relation to her over the past few years that we could talk about. New York Times, Super Bowl. These things certainly impacted her popularity on the whole, but I think really what made her take a nosedive musically was her third full-length LP, Maya. An LP whose instrumentals moved into territory that was way noisier, just harsher, more obtuse than anything on her previous records. At the time this record was released, the harsh power tools and the shots of noise and the heavy, heavy kick drums opening up one of the tracks here, Step Up, turned a lot of people sour. Even I myself did not find a lot of the production on this LP to be all that pleasant to the ears. However, in a world where currently we have things like death grips and trap electro bangers, because people love that bass and they love those hard hitting noises, I think it might be worth kind of going back and re-listening to this record simply because of how bombastic the beats on this thing are. Even though this record did get a mixed reception, it didn't slow M.I.A. down a bit. She went on to release the Vicky Leaks mixtape shortly after, and last year she put out her biggest single yet, only seconded by Paper Planes, Bad Girls, which lands on this LP. The song is catchy as hell, fantastic chorus, really sweet, epic and catchy Middle Eastern melody, as well as a hard, banging groove, and vocally M.I.A. brings that cool as a cucumber charisma that makes some of her best songs so great. So not only does this LP have some of M.I.A.'s best tracks ever on it, but it's not like some of the mixed reception around her last record has really shaken her sound at all, because some of the tracks on this LP are just as unapologetically noisy as moments on Maya. Like the song Yala, with these buzzing bass lines and these very, very loud shouts from M.I.A. at the beginning, a really catchy chorus, banger beats. Lyrically, there's a lot of club imagery, but again, M.I.A. is kind of doing a little clever turn of phrase here, talking about that excess and that materialism in mainstream music, but also talking about, hey, Yala, you always live again, Hinduism, Eastern religions and forms of philosophy. And it's not like she comes off in songs like this as if she's looking down her nose at you or anything like that. It's tracks like this that like any hip hop artist, M.I.A. just braggadociously represents what she's all about. Nice, nice, nice. And there are other tracks here that are also freaking just, ah, oh, huge, bangers that I find to be just as enjoyable, like Only One You and Warriors. There is the song Double Trouble Bubble, which is sort of a weird fusion of electro, trap, and reggae. It's an oddly refreshing combo and just a fun song. Then there's No It Ain't Right, which is kind of this slowed down trap sex ballad that is Kind of catchy, one of the more underwhelming tracks on the album, but I like that they were able to take this very hard, aggressive sound that's very popular right now and kind of turn it into something that's a little sweeter, more tender in a way. And then there's the song Attention, which is kind of another sort of left field surprise on this album where essentially instrumentally we have a two-step type track. And I know this beat, I know this rhythm is really popular right now in electronic music, and rarely do I catch an artist sort of doing a one-off track in this style where it feels really bold 
bold and interesting and very brash. And that is certainly what I got here with how zany and noisy and colorful the production is, which MIA's production typically is. It's not like she put together some kind of sleeper snoozer of a two-step track, especially with the lyrics on this track doing a sort of odd concept throughout where MIA is using words over and over and over that have the word tent in them and emphasizing that word with a very brash, I use the word again, use of autotune, like president, attention, tend, account, tent, mutant. Most of the experiments that MIA does on this record, most of the new ground she tries to step on, at least new for her, goes over pretty well. I think one of the most underwhelming spots, though, is the moment here where she samples the weekend track Lucky Star for the song Exodus. In a way, I do feel like songs such as Exodus put a line between moments when MIA is singing in that really sort of listless, girly, silly, tongue-in-cheek style, like on the song Come Walk With Me, a track on here that I do like, but her voice kind of just mm, gets old for me by the end of the track, especially with the repeating lyrical verses, but still that is a very fun, interesting, and hard-hitting song about social media, friendship, people interacting in this current modern technology age. But here on Exodus, MIA's singing is just fiery. It's passionate. The beat is especially killer and atmospheric and epic. It's just a shame that across this track, which is one of the longest on this LP, MIA's singing and the beat don't change up that significantly and it just all kind of gets stale by the end of it. There's not that much structure to this track and I feel like the entire song hinges a little bit too much on this Lone Weekend sample. The song Lights to me kind of has that same issue of just not being diverse enough from beginning to end. And then there's the song Sexodus which finishes this album off and it's just like a hard trapified banger version of Exodus. The sample is pretty much the same. MIA MIA's singing on this track is exactly the same. It doesn't even feel like she changed the vocal take at all either. To hear it rehashed in this way, it's just not that great. It doesn't add to the album for me at all. Still, despite my complaints about that track and, and a handful of other songs on here that, that underwhelm me a bit and just this general overall feel that this album doesn't flow all that well, I did think a vast majority of these tracks were great to listen to. Like usual, M.I.A. comes through with tons of personality, great beats and production, sharp singles, despite some lyrical and vocal limitations, M.I.A. crafts some really fun, thoughtful, and infectious tracks on this LP. Still, her first two LPs are, are, are my favorites. This album does not beat them out, but I'm still feeling a decent to strong seven on this thing. Transition. But if you've given this LP a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. M.I.A. Matangi? Forever.